The Summary of the Poem A Poison Tree by William Blake This poem is sad. It expresses the repressed and traumatic feelings and emotions. It deals with anger with an individual. To our dismay, this anger leads to the murder, the ultimate end of a person, no matter who he is. The poem explores themes of indignation, revenge, and more generally the fallen state of mankind. I was angry with my friend. I told my wrath. My wrath did end. As the poem opens, the speaker describes how he was angry with his friend. Bad times. Still, he told his friend he was angry, I told my wrath, and presumably why he was angry, and his anger disappeared. Happy days are here again. We notice that these lines are linked with end rhyme and a pretty consistent rhythm. We wonder if this form will continue. Spoiler alert, check out form and meter for more on this. I was angry with my foe. I told it not, my wrath did grow. The speaker describes a different scenario, now. He was once angry with his foe, aka his enemy, but didn't tell him about it. Since the speaker did not talk about his anger, I told it not, his anger got bigger and bigger, my wrath did grow. You know how, when you keep something bottled up inside, it tends to make that feeling more intense and overwhelming? We're guessing that this is what's going on for the speaker here. And I watered it in fears. Night and morning with my tears. And I sunned it with smiles. And with soft deceitful wiles. The speaker talks more about how his anger grows. Using figurative language, he treats this anger very much like a plant. A plant needs water and sun in order to grow, and so apparently does his anger. He watered it with his fears and his tears and made sure it got plenty of sunshine. Now, we know that the speaker didn't give his anger plant real sunshine. Instead, he gave it smiles and deceitful wiles. These are more like fake sunshine. They help the plant to grow, like real sunshine would for a real plant. A wile is a crafty, cunning, or deceitful trick. Deceitful wiles, then, are super deceitful tricks, or really, really cunning traps. The speaker suggests that he is a very deceptive person and that he is planning something very sinister and mischievous. Whatever it is, though, his anger seems to dig it, since those deceitful schemes are like sunshine to it. A growing plant is usually a good, positive thing, a symbol of life. It seems ironic that a growing plant is being compared to a growing anger. Is anger a good thing in the world of this poem? And it grew both day and night. Till it bore an apple bright. And my foe beheld it shine. And he knew that it was mine. Because of the speaker's efforts, his plant, anger, eventually bears, bore, fruit, an apple bright. Yum. Wait, is this apple a good thing? The speaker's enemy sure thinks so. The enemy sees the fruit of the speaker's wrath, and somehow he's able to recognize that it belongs to the speaker. It's not clear how, though. Let's read on to see if that's explained later in the poem. And into my garden stole. When the night had veiled the pole. In the morning glad I see. My foe outstretched beneath the tree. Aha! The enemy has seen this anger apple in the speaker's garden. So, it's safe to say that's how he knows it is the speaker's. That doesn't stop the enemy from trying to steal it, though. After he has seen the apple, the foe sneaks into the speaker's garden at night. The word stole is a past tense of the verb steal, which in this context means something like sneak in secretly. This word also suggests steal, like a thief steals. It seems that the speaker is blaming his foe, or calling him a thief. 
This happens when it's super dark out. In the phrase night had veiled pole, pole refers to the top of the earth, as in the North Pole. But it can also mean the pole star, also known as the North Star, also known as Polaris. It's an important star for navigation, since it's bright and it stays pretty much fixed in the sky. Tonight, though, the night has veiled it, covered it up. This star, used in navigating folks safely through danger, is not visible. Uh-oh. To suggest that the night, an abstract time, could actually cover up the star, like a person might, is to use personification. Apparently, at some point in the super dark night, the enemy eats the apple, which ends up killing him or making him fall asleep. It's not clear which, although the speaker is glad to see him laid out in the garden. We're going to go with death for the enemy here, since the speaker would likely not be too happy if his enemy both ate his apple and used his garden like a cheap hotel. Still, the word glad is a bit ambiguous here. It could have more than one meaning. Glad could refer to the morning, as in the morning is glad, or it can refer to the speaker's feelings when he sees his foe lying beneath the tree. Either way, it seems like bad times for the enemy, good times for the speaker. Or is it, 